Warning! The episode you are about to listen to most likely contains graphic language, details of violence and murder, and may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 31 of the True Crime Podcast, where I talk murder with my mother. What is... I don't even know. It's been so long. I, I don't know. even remember what we're called. I, know. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on. Did I even do that right? Don't even remember. Because it's fucking been a whole year. No, just kidding. I'm it seems like last a whole year. year, yeah, because so much has happened in the time... Oh yeah. my god, we could probably fill a whole episode with shit that's We literally, happened. we could literally <laughs> just talk about what's happened for probably a whole hour and a half. Yep. <laughs> so, but yeah, episode 31, it's like fucking these episodes get more and more, obviously that's what happens, they get more and more and then it's like, ah, how many episodes is it? If you hear any strange gurgles, coos, <laughs> crying in the background, we have a new munchkin that's... Yep. Kiana Victoria Robles was born on December 22nd. Lucky girl has her birthday three days before Christmas <laughs> and two, really, because we're Latin and we celebrate on the 24th. And, well, I'm not Latin. Well, but. you're not. You're the only part of everyone here that's not Latin. Oh, oh, and there she is. <laughs> she's a really good baby. She's awesome. And she's just such a perfect addition to our family. So... She's great, and I'm recovering well, and yeah. Except for the fact that the whole family got COVID when the baby was... <laughs> two weeks old. Two it was weeks super old, in- fun. Including the baby. Yeah, the baby actually was the one that tested positive for it, so that was really sad, getting that big, huge yeah. Q-tip up her nose. It was but really she, scary, too. It was. She took it like a champ. I think you were more scared than anybody. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit freaked out. The doctors, honestly, were very, like, nobody seemed to have a care in the world about it so that made me feel like way except for me that was waking up every night all night thinking yeah well you have an anxiety problem (laughs) but that's for a whole other episode um no but it's your 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 granddaughter you know i get it and like the whole time you were pregnant my worst fear was that you were gonna get covid and then I then you had the baby and got COVID two minutes later, <laughs> and the new baby got it, and everybody got it, and I was like, "Well, and that's just oh the thing. God! That's just the thing, right? Is everybody has gotten it? This Omicron people that are double vaccinated, even with their booster, have gotten it. Oh yeah. So I mean, and not even just those people. Obviously, people that are non-vaccinated, just everybody and their fucking d- g- dog. I was gonna say grandma, <laughs> but I don't want to jinx so that my grandma will get and it. And the thing too is that. I want to say, like, I'm grateful that you guys got this variant, but a lot of people are getting really sick with the yeah. Omicron variant yeah. also. But you guys ended up being pretty lucky with it. I mean, you just was kind of like you all had cold, extreme cold. I just cold. had a headache. I literally had a headache and was, like, so and baby fucking tired. It. And, it, yeah, which exactly. It's like, was that why I was tired? Am I just, do I have Omicron? You know, it was very... Yeah, but the baby was so congested, we brought her in, and they basically were like, oh, let's test her for RSV or other, you know, respiratory illnesses, and let's just shove this giant fucking Q-tip that's bigger than her whole nose up her nostril. She took it like a champ, she was good, and two days later, they're like, hi, your baby has tested positive for COVID. I was like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so, so that's why we needed that extra week. Yeah, we needed an extra <laughs> week because there was that and just getting over Christmas and obviously life with a newborn. Not that I really remember, but it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It, it drags on. Yeah. Well, time flies, <laughs> but it's yeah. slow at the same time. Exactly. So, yep. Everything on that front is good. And in news of some things that we were following, obviously in 2021, uh, we were following the close, well, closely we were following, mommy brain, um, the disappearance and, well, disappearance, air quotes, of Naomi Onitera. So, and that's the one that I was obsessing with and driving by her house uh, yeah, 15 times a day. 15,000 times a week. And which is so when we last left you guys, she was uh, considered, they said that they were handing it over to IHIT, the Integrated Homicide Investigation, in- invest- team. investigation team. Yeah. And they just um, arrested her husband. Surprise, her husband. surprise. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Like, okay. 
I know that we're, you know, we obviously speculated that, but we were correct, which never, obviously, it's never nice to be like, yeah, this is the killer. But now the mystery is kind of, you know, the neighborhood feels a little bit safer. Other than the fact they just let him fucking live there for the last time. Yeah, like months. he lived there from August until December. And then somebody posted in the group that we follow very closely. Um, and one of the groups we're in on Facebook, because we're weirdos. Um, and so we we followed that group we get i get notifications about it somebody posted pictures of him yeah because up until now he's been a very mysterious figure here because we knew that she had married him and she had met him online christian mingle and there was speculation that he wouldn't even let people take pictures on their wedding day yeah and nobody knew his real name it was all very sus and just yeah kind of yeah. So that's all come out. Enough. His name is Regis Obnis. Yep. And, and he, yeah. mom saw him at 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven so, right beside their house. And I'm pretty sure that it was exactly the same time, the day of or the day after she went missing. I was in the 7-Eleven getting right by their house. And that was just a coincidence. And there was this guy staring at me and making eyes at me. Well, and, and you've always been a magnet. So. Yeah. <laughs> of course, because I'm so fucking beautiful. Yes. Anyway. But for black men. Yeah. Is what I mean. Yeah. So he is, I think, of Haitian, Haitian descent. Haitian, I think. Well, yeah. fuck, who knows? He's who a knows? fucking we mystery. Don't, we don't really know, but that's the rumor around town, yo. And <laughs> this guy was looking at me and, like, giving me the eye, like, hey, what up? And just, like... But creepy, he was, but he like was, really aggressive. And so the guy at the 7 Eleven that he was trying to buy phone minutes off of said, Which How's your phone wife? Minutes? It's fucking 2022. I mean, at the time it was 2021. Sorry. I have phone minutes. Oh, so, <laughs> you have minutes? With your new plan? I don't have to go it buy, was this buy fucking them outside. 2001? What they the fuck? Are, they automatic. Hey, you're getting off track. Sorry. Fuck anyway, phone minutes. I don't so... think anything's wrong with phone minutes. But anyway. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah. So then the guy at the 7 Eleven said, Hey, how's your wife? And the man said, Oh, she's mad at me as usual. Like, so the, obviously they had a familiar. And, and that's the thing. I've had a corner store across from my house where you go there and. You know, obviously I don't tell them fucking everything, but yeah. sometimes there's someone that works there and you kind of build that relationship with them if you go there all the time, especially to buy phone minutes, you're probably in there every fucking three days. <laughs> well, my phone minutes last the whole month anyway, but my dad, it doesn't. Yeah. So that was weird because after they, after that girl that had dated him posted the picture. In I'm the like, group on Facebook. Oh my God. That's the creepy guy from the 7-Eleven. And to say like, hey, how's your wife? Or, you know, how's your wife? How's this? Oh, mad as usual. Like, yeah. Oh, and like, then she goes missing a couple days later. Like, uh, I think it was probably the same day. I don't, I, I would have said something if I knew, but I don't, I don't remember. Well, and like you said earlier, it took such a long time for them to come out like no one came out with a picture this girl happened to be like you know i dated him i met him on christian mingle but she didn't even know that was his real name and she dated him for two years well he clearly just kind of like we had said before i think that he was quite a liar obviously <laughs> yeah, <I think. laughs> and nobody even knew i mean and to say don't take pictures of me at my own wedding like that's fucking suspicious so yeah so the unfortunate well i mean the interim thing right now is he's been charged with manslaughter and he's being held but which there's different that's the thing right now obviously they have enough evidence to charge him with manslaughter they don't want him to there's the loophole right? yeah they don't want him to get like they don't have enough evidence to prove their case, and then he ends up getting out. Well, and that way they can form or they can find more evidence so that they can charge him with something higher than manslaughter. Yeah. Like first degree or second degree or whatever, because obviously it was, even if it wasn't premeditated, it's at least second degree. You freaking obviously now have killed your wife somehow. She died somehow. Something happened. And then you... Because he did get charged with indecency, indecency to, to a, to a human, dead body. Yeah, yeah. So obviously he, because he for sure had to have cut her up. Or, well, we knew that because yeah. they dug up the whole yard and they had, remember they had the cadaver dogs in there for such a long time. And remember and someone saw him yelling at the bushes? So at the rock and the bushes. Yeah, so. And they dug up the yard and then there was speculation about uh, that he had used chemicals. Yeah, there's. And, uh, pretty, I mean, right now it's all rumors because. Exactly. Whatever. But one of the ladies from the group has been going to court and 
he just keeps going on the TV at court instead of being there live. And he has uh, has his um, face mask on every time. Which, he's on a TV. He's just worried about getting COVID through the TV screen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure he... Well, he must be. Some people wear COVID masks in their car alone and gloves when they drive. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I guess you see that shit all day. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, another thing that kind of happened is we were following the Gabby Petito case. And remember then, they were looking for Brian and... Blah, blah, blah. They're looking for him for so long. Doug the Bounty Hunter was looking for him. How could you forget? And then they found him. But they he was deceased. And he had all these belongings with him. So everyone's like, oh, Brian Laundrie's dead. I obviously assumed, as I'm sure a million other people, he that he killed himself. So then that was confirmed that he killed himself. And then it was confirmed because he had they had sta- stated that he had a bunch of stuff with him, like a, a notebook and all this stuff. That they, it was just released the other day that his notebook did say that he, like, he admitted to killing Gabby. So, oh, I didn't know that. You're just telling me for the first time. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm letting you know. So, letting you guys know too, because, you know, sometimes you don't follow cases and, or you do follow them and then stuff happens and you miss it. Well, there you go. So, that's a little bit of closure. Obviously, not closure for the family because it's like, okay, well, maybe they'll know why. Maybe he's. Don't you think his parents knew that he'd done that? For sure. I think that they were like, run, go away, like... Go kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what they said, because that's what he did, so who knows. But, yeah. So, Imagine, you're like, hmm, well, you don't really have very many options You here. should probably just go kill yourself. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably not the thing I would say to my kids, but, I mean, hey, well, some people are... Well, I don't know are, if I would, but... Yeah, well... Like, <laughs> I know, JK, you I'd have anxiety about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so another thing that actually, well, it didn't happen because it's just, it, did, it has happened, but there was a, obviously in the true crime community, because that's what I pay attention to. So thought maybe I'd And especially now that she's off work on mat leave. Yeah, I have lots of time on my hands when I don't have a booby monster latched onto my chest. But even then, I mean, I get a lot of shit done with her on there, so it's fine, I guess. But so there was a woman's body that was found at the dog park in Kelowna, which obviously is going to catch my eye because what the fuck. And Kelowna was- is a city that my mother lives in, which is like a four hour drive from here. Yeah, it's a beautiful interior. city. Yeah. A lot of people go there in the in the summer. It's like a uh, lake lake city like land of lakes. Yeah. So there was a body like I said found there and it was ID'd as a woman named Austin Godfrey and she was from Ontario and she and was young. She was young. She was like I think I want to say 25. And so that came out and then oh dun dun dun. <laughs> anyway, 2022 my my Good ringer's luck. still not fucking off, so <laughs> sorry about that. So anyway, there was that body was found and it was ID'd, and then people were coming out saying that she. I actually saw a screenshot of it in the comments on the on a group that I follow. Surprise, surprise! Like mother, like daughter. Yeah, and so there was someone posted a Snapchat that she posted right before she went missing or right before she passed away saying, if I haven't snapped in a week, please call the Kelowna police as Musa Muhammad Khan, which I don't know if I'm allowed to say his name. It's on social media, but oh well, um, has probably done something to me. His birthday is January 21st. He's 21 and he travels back and forth between Vancouver, Surrey, Kelowna and Yukon Whitehorse. And then she put <gasps> pictures of this guy who I'm assuming is someone that she was either involved with in some way obviously sounds like gang activity if he's traveling in those areas oh for sure sure, probably he's probably dials does like a dial a dope i love when people say dial a dope but anyway like he probably runs a phone in one of those places maybe not i mean i totally speculate i don't know and we don't live in this area so yeah and so basically she put like a post of him his car like if i if something happens to me this guy did it and it's like okay and then her body's found at a dog park like holy fuck i guess he probably didn't know that she posted no all that stuff. no she sent it to like her close friends and stuff so anyway we're waiting for i'm waiting for that the update on that so yeah yeah so with all my time off obviously i'm invested in all these random cases that i find on the internet but another thing that I came across was uh, a documentary and anyway I was watching it it caught my eye because as you guys know my favorite serial killer I mean you know my 
thing, the one that I have the most interest in is the Green River Killer, which we did episode, I want to say like, was it 12? 12? Oh, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, so Fuck, we did we 231 now. On. Yeah, we did two episodes on it, Gary Ridgway. And so the first episode of this documentary was, it's called Catching Killers. It's on Netflix. So Gary was the first one. So I watched it. Obviously, they did a great job. And then there was only three more episodes. So I was like, oh, you know what? Let's just watch all of it tonight while I'm up all night long. <laughs> and so then there was one called The Happy Face Killer. And it was two parts. So anyway, that one, I was watching it and went into it. And this is, I was very surprised. I didn't know the details to this case, given, you know. I've had like people this. suggest... You guys should do the happy face killer. And I'm like, what? Yeah, which I was like, eh, whatever. I think other podcasts I've listened to covered it. But I, I never had that much knowledge about Me it. Me neither. Okay, well, we watched this fucking episode. And now this episode is what we're going to do it on. So we're actually going to do it in two parts where you'll see. It's very... <laughs> it's, it's honestly... I, I can't even... It's a trip. It is. It really is a trip. So... With that being said, 16 minutes into our intro, here we go. We had to catch well, you guys up. Well, we had up. a lot of catching up today. We definitely did. So we are going to get to episode 31. So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and how it's laid out. And like I said, honestly, this will probably be a two-parter. If not, we'll come to that. I yeah. guess we'll see. We'll I guess we will. Spent. Yeah. So either it's going to end this episode or it's not <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys will see, I guess. We're a little all over the board. But... We are. It's 2022. Fuck it. Fuck we go. it. Murder with my mother. Yo. This episode takes place on January 21st, 1990 in Portland, Oregon, when 23-year-old Tanya Bennett was reported missing by her family. Just the next day on January 22nd, the body of a woman was found next to the old Columbia River Highway in Portland, Oregon up along a forest-surrounded road and surprisingly very obvious to the sight of passerbyers. So, like, if you drove by, you could see this body just laying there. So I, I don't think that it was a very, very populated road, but obviously somebody drove by and called the police because they spotted a body. It's in the Columbia Gorge, so it's, like, kind of like a park-like setting. So the okay. gorge is, like, two big cliffs yeah. that go down to the river. Okay. So... Tanya Bennett was a resident of Portland, Oregon. She was said to be really friendly, and she liked to put smiles on everybody's faces. You were saying that she had a, when the research you were doing, she was a little bit slow. So right? they said she had a disability. She had very poor impulse control. Okay. And she had a bunch of um, different symptoms that, to me, really screamed fetal alcohol syndrome from the training that I had in different types of disabilities. Yeah, because all those things, poor impulse control, um, just all of that. She had, yeah, like, she had a, a difficult time, um, like, she had a disability, basically. Well, and it, she, it said she was very naive to, like, thinking everybody was good-hearted, which, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and she was overly, overly, overly friendly, too. And But her sister was, I read an interview with her sister, like, well, she's the only one that actually graduated from high school in our family. Well, but, that happens a lot, though, yeah. right? Because it's like you're put in a basis program when you have a disability or, you know, yeah. and you get a little more assistance, a little more help. And there was a couple kids in my, uh, the grade below me that graduated with us, and they were in the basis program because they, like, did they surpassed other people in their grade, I guess. Yeah, well, because probably, too, like, if you are in the basis program and you're being kept an eye on, especially at that age, you're not out yeah. there doing the stuff that everyone else is doing. Yeah, and sadly, there wasn't too much available on Tanya when I was doing the research. Like, there was the, some things like this, but there, was, there wasn't too much. Like, I couldn't find her birthday. I'm assuming she was born in 1967 or 68 because she was 23 at the time she was murdered. And it was January. So unless she had an early birthday, then she maybe was born in 68. Yeah, so or... that's what I mean. Like, back in the day, there was not as much known about fetal alcohol syndrome or having drinks while you were pregnant. Everybody yeah, smoked exactly. when they were pregnant. Or when they breastfed. Yeah, so. <laughs> not up. naming any names. Anyway, so Tanya's family anticipated the worst, but in a tragic twist, obviously, their, their fears were realized when it was identified to be her so this was what eight days later one of the neighbors said to them after they had shared that she was missing like oh you should watch the news 
and the family turned on the news and they had a um picture of the body a sketch yeah, yeah like a, a sketch. sketch that was really poorly done <laughs> It could yeah. have really been anybody, but it obviously, was a potato head. yeah, really, literally, like it was like. Anyway, they also had like the clothes. They had her clothes, her act pictures of her actual clothes, yeah. and that's when her sister said they knew that it was her for sure because of the clothes. Yeah, and they did that back in the day a lot. They would take the clothes. Now they don't do that so much. They would like take pictures of things that were found with the body, especially to identify them. Yeah. So the body was found with absolutely no identification on her person. No, so there was no nothing. purse, no nothing. So it was really obvious right away that there were signs of a sexual abuse and an asphyxi- uh, asphyxiation. So just by looking at the body, you could tell she was strangled, basically, or beat up. And it appeared that Tanya's murderer had assaulted her with a blunt instrument, which resulted in her significant injuries. And a subsequent autopsy verified what was apparent to the naked eye. Uh, that they, she was sexually assaulted and it indicated that she was strangled. That was the cause of her death. So right away, the police got a call. Like, what well, was they, it? They like, had put it on Crime Stoppers first because they weren't even finding out who it was at first. So and they fuck, put Crime, Crime Stoppers, Stoppers used to be the shit, remember? Crime Stoppers was the shit. Like, well, they just put it on the TV, it'd be like... It would interrupt nah, your show, yeah. remember? Like, Crime next Stoppers would... was really good. Like It was, we should bring it back. I mean, now we have like stuff well, like Amber Alerts and all back. that. Maybe it never left. Yeah. But I just fucking stopped watching but cable. It's on Canadian TV, so who watches it? Well, this isn't in Canada. No, I know, but the Crime Stoppers that would be relevant to us. Would oh be yeah, in our area and people would just complain like they did with the Amber Alert fucking assholes. Yeah. Anyway, it's like this so, is interrupting my show. Yeah. So they did the Crime Stoppers uh, blurb on her and the crime and everything, and then that's when they started getting tips. Well, yeah, then they got a phone call, and it really originally mistook they they mistook it for like a huge breakthrough because it was someone saying like. So, okay, so this lady, her name is Laverne Pavlinak. She contacted the police after overhearing a guy, is what she said, named John Sosnovsky, uh, talking about Tanya's murder in a pub. Which is funny that she said that it was just some guy, because once police found out who she was, who Laverne was, they realized that it was actually her own boyfriend, her live-in boyfriend, was John Sosnovsky or whatever. So they have a funny story. So Laverne was significantly older than John Sosnovsky. She was 18 years older. And when the police went to interview her... She was, like, basically, she was 57 years old, and she was, like, dowdy and, like... But she looks 75 yeah, years old. Yeah, she was, like, an old lady. Yeah. And... <laughs> I don't know if it was just, you looked... People in the 80s and 90s looked old when they weren't that old. I don't know if that's a thing mean to say, but when they were older yeah, already. Yeah, and I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. You got... People got progressively younger looking over the years, is yeah, what I'm going to say. It's true. Because, like, think about it. You're what? Okay. I'm 35. Okay. <laughs> okay. But really, this lady is like maybe supposed to be eight years or nine years older than you right now at the time. Yes. I'm fucking sorry. You are like a fucking smoke show. This lady looks like my grandma's grandma. Like, I'm fucking serious. So. And he wasn't even that so bad he, looking. So if she, so if she was 57, He's that made 39. him 39, yeah. and he was with this lady who, like, we'll put a picture of up, and... Yeah, we will. They said she was a really sweet lady, but she... When you see her, well, like, fucking... you know, who's gonna bang this lady? That's what I'm wondering. So I guess she was married to her first husband, uh, and he was unfaithful, so they had a divorce. And then the next man she married had a... an illness. He died of cancer. And he owned a farm, and so this John Savnoski was his farmhand. And I guess after the second husband died of cancer, he just stayed on to help Laverne, but ended up helping her with more stuff than just the farming, I guess. There's milk in her. Well, it's weird because, like I said, she's the one that called. She's the one at first <laughs> it was just a guy. And now it's her boyfriend. Now it's her boyfriend, cops find out. So they're like, okay. Then, and she's already called in on him twice more 
for bank robberies. But I don't think they found that they out. They did find it out right away. They before, did? Yeah. And they still were like, this yeah. bitch is fucking, oh mm-hmm. god. Anyway, they could have probably saved themselves a lot of time and a lot of headache. <laughs> so the next time they talked to her, they... So when they opt, when she opted to take her narrative a step further, the pair was basically they wanted to question both of them. So they questioned him, and he he was a blackout drinker, and I've been there. I haven't drank. I actually just celebrated my seven years not drinking, woo woo, not even a sip. And that's personal choice, and that makes us all lucky. That does. It makes everybody that that I love safe <laughs> and yeah, and happier and happier. It's great. So anyway. I know what he means when he, I mean, I don't know what he means because half this fucking episode just blows me away, but he is a blackout drinker, like I said, which I can attest to when you can, when you blackout, if someone tells you you did something, you're going to believe them because you're well, like, well, yeah, the and you're, it's going to be your worst fear that you did something you didn't want to do. And well, exactly. You... And that's why I don't drink because I just want to have total control. Like I said, I'm more of a hippie, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's just, the thing is, when you drink like that and someone tells you something, you take their word for it. Because, like, I used to literally say to people, like, oh, I wasn't there. <laughs> like, and it was like, yes. I was there. I was full, fully there. Your body is, like, basically when it's you're like a shell. blackout drunk, it's like a marionette just being, like, yeah. a puppet that anybody... An evil puppet. Yeah. That's beating all your loved ones up. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Or strangers. But anyway, so in this case, he is just going to try to kind of think of what he thinks happens. We made up a story. Or he says... Um, yeah, I was with a friend and he picked me up and he had a body in his car and it was like, whoa, like, oh my God. So he admitted that he knows something about it. Then in the next room, they're interviewing Laverne and she's like, John called me at two in the morning and he told me to come and bring something to put something heavy in. And so she gets there and this lady's passed out in the parking lot of this bar and he's like, you know, she's like, is she okay? And he's like, she's dead. And then, so then it's, then it turns into like, she helped him dispose of of Tanya Bennett's body and it was just anyway so that was basically they got detained or John got detained and Laverne took them to the state like to show where the body was they took Laverne up to the area and she actually picked out the exact spot where Tanya Bennett was found yeah like so, within 10 feet so obviously they're like oh yeah this is true 100 percent and then she <sighs> and then after that she just kept changing her story, changing her story, changing her story. And they still hadn't arrested anyone. They gave John a lie detector test, which he failed. He failed, yeah. Which, I f- honestly, then the more we do cases, like, the lie, lie detectors, detectors are yeah, so unreliable. Yeah. So then they gave the other guy a lie detector test, who <laughs> apparently John said the body was yeah, in the he was like, in his what car. The fuck? And he was like, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. You can take my car. He he passed the lie detector, and they took his car, and there was, like, nil. There was nothing. nothing there was not no. a hair, a fiber, nothing that matched. No. So they, they kind of... Have any... Yeah, and when you have no physical evidence... Yeah. I mean... So they just kind of brushed that off. They still hadn't arrested anyone, and then uh, Lorraine came to them again, or Laverne, sorry. Laverne, Laverne came to them again and said, oh, I just found this in the back of my car, and it was a purse... That vaguely matched the description of Tanya Bennett's purse. And, well, and rem- we didn't mention this yet, but Tanya Bennett had her acid wash, obviously, because it was early 90s. Acid wash jeans were cut. They were like, the buttons were cut off of them. Button fly. Yeah, the, bu- the button fly, <laughs> which is just a fly made of buttons for everyone born after 1995. Um, but yeah, so... They no, they didn't really, they obviously must have said that that was missing. And so she was like, here, I have this purse, which it obviously was also said in the news that her purse was missing. So they found this purse, Laverne found this purse and these, well, it wasn't it was even a, a button, it was, it was denim. a piece of jean in the purse. So obviously now they're like, oh my oh, God. Yeah. So yeah. then she also said while she was presenting this evidence <laughs> to them, she said... It's correction time. Yeah. I'm going to change my story again because not only did John call me at two o'clock in the morning and ask me to bring uh, something to put something heavy in, I actually got there and Tanya was alive and they were flirting and talking in the parking lot. And then she said that he said, hey, I'm going to bring this lady somewhere to have sex with me. And so he got in the car and... And then, and then he said, she's not going home. <laughs> 
is all in Laverne. Okay, and this is all in Laverne's words, okay? So then Laverne said that he said, drive me up to the old Oregon, I don't know what that place is called. The Gorge area. There's like a building there. I'm not 100% sure what it was called, but it looked like some kind of like... I don't know, like, you know those planetariums that you can, like, look at stars? I don't know if that's what it is. It's totally just guessing. But anyway, so she, they went up there. Laverne stayed in the car while they went to go have sex outside. And then he came back and said, I need you to come and hold her while I tie her up. Because it's better that way. It's better that way. And I'll get more of a kick out of it or whatever. So Laverne's like, okay, I'll come and help my boyfriend <laughs> tie up this young lady to have sex with her because that's better that way so i put a rope around her neck but then i was pulling the rope so hard that she she stopped moving yeah she died so now she's fully confessing that she's the one saying that she's the killer so she killed she killed tanya so now it's like holy fuck these these (laughs) the investigators are like what the fuck you're this, this nice old lady that she like literally looks like your coffee yeah, yeah. she then she's very sweet and her daughter and and family is like so she calls her daughter because the cops she calls her daughter and tells her daughter the whole story while she's at the police station and the daughter's like uh are you sure this happened mom and she's like well they made me call you because i said this to them and they said if i called you they would believe it was true <laughs> so she uh she got arrested yeah so they actually she didn't get arrested right away remember i don't know if you remember in the documentary the da is like well where is she when the investigator was like, oh yeah she admitted fully that she's the one that killed her and then and they have a recording saying like you know do you believe that this is your fault and she's like i do like i feel so bad and it's like okay and then they just let her fucking go yeah they just let her go home so the da is like what the fuck is wrong with you guys why would you let her go she's a she's murderer a killer. <laughs> even though she is literally like but they said like well she's such a nice lady yeah. like they just let her go home hey guys it's danica I know you've heard our commercial of First Sense Dog Dry Shampoo, but now's your chance to get some for yourself and for your furry companion. Use promo code MWMM10 at checkout at www.firstsense.ca for 10% off your first sifter pack. These things are awesome. With the sifter pack, you can try all three scents, restorative cedarwood, purifying peppermint, and my personal favorite, Zen Lavender. That way, you can say goodbye to those stinky car rides home. I promise you and your fur baby are gonna love this product. Now, back to Murder With My Mother. So, anyway, they both get brought in, and they both get charged because Laverne said this, and the a trial they had a trial and they found her guilty yeah laverne was found guilty of and then degree murder yeah and then john was just he contested no he was no contest like he didn't remember if this actually had happened and like laverne's saying it happened so maybe it did happen well yeah and so in the trial actually what happened was because they obviously the defense that's their job is to try to persuade the jury from thinking that their client's guilty the jury heard evidence that there was all these graffitis popping up in different bathrooms all over like um that oregon. area oregon so they were finding these messages in bathroom stalls saying i i killed this person i killed that person and one of the people was i killed tanya bennett january 22 or yeah. whatever january 22nd 1990. 1990 i killed tanya bennett and then they all had happy faces with them so obviously i mean okay i've been in lots of bathrooms where there's graffiti <laughs> most of the things i read i don't know about if penises the cunt yeah or- <laughs> Usually, or I'm gonna love Tamara forever. Yeah, but so why would you really believe that I killed Tony Bennett? Exactly, and with a happy face beside it, like you're really fucking setting the mood. So anyway, furthermore, a it's not like I said, no one's gonna take that serious. So the jury was just like, hey, this is probably thinking like this is fucking irrelevant. Why would you even bring that up? Like I, I could write fucking anything I want on a. I could fucking do a glory hole in the fucking bathroom if oh, I wanted yeah. to. Oh, yeah. Bring back you the know? glory hole. I don't think the glory hole ever left, Mom. Oh. <laughs> it was just from Porky's. No, I'm pretty sure that there... I went into a store once, and 
a store. It was an 18 plus store, but it was in a little rougher area. And the lady in there told me, because there's peep shows for 25 cents, that guys go in there and she's like, I just gave up patching the holes. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, guys cut holes in the wall and one go, someone goes in one room. It's like a known gay glory hole spot, this store. On King George Highway? Yes. <laughs> yes. I was so, I was blown away. I was like, really? She's like, yeah. You like, think you were blown away yeah. about about the guy in the next stall? <laughs> no, I didn't go in the glory hole, mom. I was just, the sh- oh. <laughs> just telling you the, the story, story just got more boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry that I, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, so pretty much they didn't take the bathroom graffiti at all serious. And what happened was in 1995, a newspaper started getting these letters. And these letters said that this person was taking credit. It was like written, it was written like, you know, when people write like very normal and then it's like almost like theatrical because they type and they, they print, not type, they print in all capitals. Yeah. Yeah. So they were saying like, I killed and they called her actually Sonia Bennett. So they didn't even know her name. So obviously this, the newspaper was like, oh God. And one reporter got a hold of it. They, the editor gave it to him and was like, hey, this is kind of a heavy letter, but (laughs) this person's taking credit for all these murders. And the one murder that he's taking, this person is taking, they're taking freaking ownership of is the murder of Tanya Bennett. And it was eight other murders. Yeah. Seven others. Seven other murders. Eight, including hers. But it says Tanya Bennett was the, or even though her name's Sonia Bennett, Tanya Bennett is the first um person that i've killed and then ever since then i have lost control and the, the thing is in the letter there was all these smiley faces and happy faces all over the place which if you remember because we just talked about it one, one minute ago, ago. <laughs> <laughs> there was happy hopefully faces <laughs> hopefully yeah we're just checking just testing you <laughs> there were all these happy faces all over the bathroom stalls so and they were at truck stops also which hey you know what truckers our motherfuckers. Well, well, <laughs> mine is. I mean, I mean, my dad is a trucker is what I meant. But anyway, oh, poor delivery. But truckers are going to save Canada, okay? Yeah. They're on their convoy right now for freedom. So fuck a vax pass. How about that? Yeah. Anyway, off topic. But so then they were kind of putting two and two together like, oh, God. And I think because you can see it all over the fucking face of the district attorney he was in a river in egypt this motherfucker was in denial he's like no uh-uh, there's two people in jail for that and and to be fucking fair laverne is the one that made up the whole full story well we forgot to say something important that as soon as laverne got arrested she recanted oh she was like i didn't actually do said, it no none of it was true but then but it's no laverne. how the fuck do you know all that stuff and why do you have all that well, stuff and exactly and so they were like uh-uh and who, who, <laughs> who would, would do, do that? that like that <laughs> that's the biggest part of this whole thing right so like i said it's getting more and more like eh, do, did you but why did you why did you why, why would you do that why laverne so but the the other thing is is that once the state has spent that much money on a trial and, <laughs> and housing these you. people for five years. And the years. guy was no contest. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, sure. I guess I did. I guess I do did. It. I can't remember what happened that night. And Laverne says I did it. So obviously he's probably thinking, why would Laverne lie about that? Of course, I just have to probably not like I just agree like, and go I along need to with quit it. Drinking. Fuck. Yeah, Jesus. So it ended up that they. It started, this guy named Keith Jesperson was already facing, Keith Hunter Jesperson was already facing, he was doing time for another murder. He murdered his girlfriend, something like that. So he was in jail already and he started writing and saying, it was me. I am the one that wrote those letters. He was telling everyone in jail. He was phoning reporters from jail. Yeah, and saying, I am the happy face killer. It's me. I'm the happy face killer. I was writing it on all these bathrooms. I wrote this letter because it kind of looks like a kid wrote the letter, but they knew so many details in the letter about her murder that it was like, okay, obviously this guy knows what he's talking about. And then they went to do an interview with Keith Jesperson and he said, yeah, so she was my the first person I murdered. This is why I murdered her because she said something that pissed me off. Basically, when they were having sex, about so to have what, sex. So what happened was, Tanya had gone to a pub in her neighborhood, 
after returning the videos from the night before at the video store. That's so she, 90s. Yeah, so she went to the pub and she Good for her, though. He I, wonder said if they were, I wonder if they were on time because we her never. Her sister made her return them. On time? Yeah. Because we never. I remember every time we'd go to be like, can we pay our late charges next time? So we don't, don't have money to pay. <laughs> we don't have money to pay for this <laughs> one. So catch us on the flip side. So. R.I.P. Blockbuster. So Keith Jesperson said, this girl walked into the pub. I didn't know her at all, but she hugged me like I was like her long lost friend. And then she hugged every other single person in yeah. the bar, which. And then. Okay, okay he, Renew. <laughs> he asked her, do you want to go to my truck stop and have sex? And she was like, yeah, sure. So huh. then. Something happened where she started laughing at his dick or something. Or something. they had sex once and she didn't want to do it again or... No, she said to him, I think, like, hurry up and get it over with. I'm not into yeah. it. And it was like, it triggered him. And then he punched her once and he just kept punching and punching and punching her until... So if you remember, we did say that there was blunt force trauma, like severe blunt force. And they didn't know. They thought it was with a weapon. It was actually just with his fists because... Keith Jesperson was what? Six, six foot, foot six. Six foot six. He was huge. And 300 pounds. Yes. And he not only took credit for the murder of, of her, it was also, I did seven other murders. And one of them is the one that he was in jail for. But now he's just coming clean because obviously he was doing a life sentence already. So it's like, why the fuck not own up to every other thing that you've done? Well, I think that this is kind of where we should stop because this is like a prelude to the happy face killer as we know him and we can get into his exactly yeah other cases and kind of start his history out where it's supposed to be started out laverne just kind of sidetracked it laverne what the fuck are you doing like so, so keith jesperson wanted the attention that laverne had taken away from him and that's why he, <laughs> he was came... probably like this fucking bitch yeah yeah, so if you guys didn't guess, Laverne and John had actually absolutely nothing to do with... With any killing or with anything. Ever with anything. So it boiled down to John being just a... Like we talked about it. He was a blackout drunk. He obviously was abusive. He was 18 years younger than her. He wasn't all that bad looking compared to his fucking grandma's grandma's grandma that he was fucking dating i I mean whatever okay love knows no number whatever age ain't nothing but a number you know (laughs) whatever they say but like okay she was really really old but she wasn't that old which is the part that just gets me and then the other part that gets me is that she just totally went along with yes i am a murderer and then i did it and then made up all the details about it but what she did that for is because like, apparently she was so desperate to have john out of the house and she couldn't basically break up with him and have him stay gone so she tried to pin every other fucking thing <laughs> on including him, so... the two bank robberies but like she was like pretty desperate for herself to get away from everyone if she admitted that she she did it. Yeah, I don't know if she was on the verge of like a, a breakdown of some sort or whatever, but I mean, it seemed like her and the detectives had quite a close repertoire after the 15 fucking interviews that they did with her. So you'd think that she'd be like, hey, look, I I just want my boyfriend yeah, out of my house. I just want to, I want a restraining order or, you know, like they could have helped her in some other way, but no, instead she did, she did five fucking years in the slammer. I don't know, like... For killing Tanya Bennett. Oh, she my never even God. Knew. No, no idea. So, yeah, I think mom is right. I think we will end that episode right here. And then in two more weeks, we will do the episode, a continuation of this one, but a little bit different, on the murders committed by Keith Hunter Jesperson. Who was, by the way, from Chilliwack, BC, which is very close to where we live. And I think that's cool. Yeah, well, I'm glad that he no longer lives in Chilliwack. Nope. Yeah. So, yeah, well, there you go. That was episode 31. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, I know we're a little bit all over the place today. That's why you guys fucking love us. That's why they fucking listen. (laughs) But we will, uh, still be all over the fucking place. Yeah, for the next 30 fucking episodes. (laughs) So, yeah, I wanted to take some time to... uh, Over the break, like I said, I don't know if you guys just really missed us, but we got a lot of love from you guys. Uh, we got a lot of new listeners. Um, some old friends as new listeners. Sean, I want to give you a shout out. He said that he said, move over, Brent and Michelle. <laughs> That's what he messaged me. So, <laughs> Brent and Michelle, I would watch out. Sean Saney's your new competition. <laughs> 
So, yeah, Rachel, Sean, Vanessa, Melissa, Nicola from the UK, Danielle, all of you guys uh, reached out to me. So I'm giving you guys a little shout out. Um, Amy reached out to me too. Amy from Golden Triangle, who I said last time. Uh, what's up, Amy? Again, check uh, her. Check out her Instagram because her clothes are super comfortable looking. Now that I'm not a large whale, I will be buying some nice track suits that actually fit me. <laughs> I'm surprisingly not a large whale. I was never really that large. So my no. baby was eight pounds and two ounces, which is Oh, yeah. Huge. That was funny because the baby, we were all betting on her to be around oh, six pounds, seven six, five. maybe. <laughs> and she was eight pounds, two ounces, 10 days early. So, so yeah. So it was all those protein shakes. That's, yeah, that's why, why the COVID say. didn't get her yeah so bad baby so yeah we will leave you guys on a suspense until the next episode and we will talk to you guys in two more weeks so now i'm going to end this episode if i remember how <laughs> <laughs> this oh is- and shauna oh. thanks for the bangs they're oh, fuck killer yeah, shauna, you killed the bangs <laughs> i don't think i'm allowed to get bangs because i have two calyx that sit right on each side of my fucking forehead and apparently my forehead is too small so I try to talk my hairdresser into it every time I go for a haircut, and she always talks me out of it. So Shauna tried. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I don't know. Okay, guys, I think they, we'll you see. killed the bangs. They look great. <laughs> you look great. You, it reminds me of being four years old because that's when the last time you had bangs, and I fucking love them just as much as I did then. Whoop, whoop. So with that, this has been Murder With My Mother, the true crime podcast where I talk murder with my mother. Bye, guys. Are you going to say bye? Bye. bye? <laughs> Rude. Bye.